Salutations, people of the internet. Matt here from Hydro Gaming, and welcome to episode 4 in our Let's Play of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Last episode, we ended off at the end of Route 203, about to enter, I believe, Orberg Gate right before Orberg City. So let's continue on our journey, shall we? I think it's called Orberg Gate. It is. Okay. So if we find any rock type uh, trainers in here, just know that Chimchar in the last episode learned Power Up Punch, so we'll have a way to deal with them. Is this a battle? No. Oh yeah, he gives us a TM, but I don't remember what the TM is for. Rock Smash. Hidden Moves app, fantastic. So, just like in the originals, to use hidden moves outside of battle, we need to get the uh, gym badge that corresponds with the hidden move, and for this one, we'll need the badge from Orberg City Gym. So, like I said in the last episode, I'm thinking of adding a Zubat to our team, so if I can find one, I, uh, I'm thinking I'm going to catch it. As I've always loved the Zubat line, it's, it's a classic. I would, uh, I would really love to have a Crobat on our team. The only thing stopping me is that um, when I play a new generation of Pokemon, I guess this isn't really a new generation, I tend to want to stick with Pokemon from that region. I don't like to get Pokemon from other regions, but, you know, I figure I've played through Pokemon uh, Diamond and Pearl so many times that uh, it's not a big deal. I can, I can get one from a different region. I usually reserve that for my first playthrough of the game anyways. And boy, I cannot wait till we get repels. We may have unlocked repels in stores at this point. I don't remember. Of course you want to battle. All right, people, you know what this means. We'll, uh, we'll see you soon. And with that, your reign has ended and Lux grows to level 12, fantastic. His special defense is finally going up, but now his defense isn't going up, so. Oh, bite, perfect. We need a dark type move. And I think charge is, uh, is pretty useless. Oh, wait. Oh, it raises the user's special defense stat. I did not know that. Let me know in the comments if that's new, because I feel like that wasn't a thing before. Uh, once again, we're gonna get rid of Leer. It's pretty useless. Bite, I believe, has 60 powers. Yep, and 60 power, sorry. And it is a physical type move, which is fantastic, because Shanks is primarily a physical attacker. I never understood why Luxray wasn't part dark at the end of the uh, evolution line. Maybe maybe he is, maybe I'm misremembering, but as far as I know, I think he was just straight electric type. I just think electric dark would have worked so well for him. It, you know what? He might be electric dark after the final evolution. I, I honestly don't remember. Anyways, I'll stop rambling. We're moving on now. Oh dear God, please not another battle. Yep, okay. <laughs> we will see you in just a couple seconds. Okay, so, uh, just a couple things here. For one... Sorry, I have coffee. For one, um, when we have a battle, I'm probably not going to, uh, keep saying, Oh no, a battle, see you in a bit. I'll probably just start cutting them, you'll know what it means. And two, we didn't find a Zubat on our way through the cave, so I'm gonna let fate decide. If we find a Zubat, then I will break my rule of using region-specific Pokémon. And we'll have a Zubat on the team. If we don't find a Zubat, I would like to use a Togekiss as our flying type. Uh, spoiler alert, sorry. <laughs> Orberg City, City of Energy. I was never really a fan of the Orberg City theme song, I'll be honest. You don't have a single gym badge. Other trainers will look down on you like you're a total noob, right? Do you have a gym badge? <laughs> I love... The follow me song in these games. If you've seen any of my other videos, like the game dev videos where we're currently making our own video game, I, uh, I use the follow me theme a lot. Hell, if you're interested in uh, game development and you'd like to see us make a video game here on the channel with the community, um, well, go to the channel page. There's a playlist and we're making our very own single player RPG a la Skyrim or Oblivion. It's uh, been a lot of fun. I think we're on episode 15 or 16 now. Or episode 15 will be coming out this Saturday, so keep an eye out for that if that's something you're interested in. Okay, I'll stop hawking my crap now. Let's go talk to Barry. Boy, I hope he doesn't want to battle. 
slow always, or slow as always, rather. Why you gotta insult me all the time, Barry? Bad. Hey, first thing I want to do is uh, see if the Pokemart sell repels. I don't like wasting money on uh, regular repels, but I'll make an exception. Or no, I won't. I won't make an exception. Okay. Never mind. I guess we'll just have to keep skipping the uh, the wild Pokemon battles. And I do not remember where the Pokemon Center is in this town. Obviously not around this side. Maybe I think it's to the right, actually, near the museum. Yeah. So, before we explore the Orberg City Mine, we are going to go north to Route 209, maybe, is what it is, and we are going to see if there are any items up there for us to pick up. We won't get very far because we don't have the bicycle yet, but... What did it say, Route 207? I was close. Any items? Yes, there is. Now... If you know about hidden items and the dousing machine, you're probably yelling at your screen but all the different items I'm missing, but we will uh, we'll retrace our steps with the dousing machine later on. We'll come back and pick up anything we may have missed. Pokeball. And there's some berries up there. Fantastic. One thing we don't have to worry about is the battery running dry in these games and thus... Uh, not being able to grow berries. That was a big problem with the old Game Boy games. They had an internal battery in them, and when that battery ran out of power, uh, your game's internal clock also stopped working. So, time-based events, like uh, in the original Pokemon Silver, Gold, Crystal, your day-night cycle would stop working. In games like Pokemon Emerald, Ruby, Sapphire, your berries wouldn't grow anymore. And I think there was a bug catching contest in Pokemon Gold and Silver 2 that would no longer work if your clock stopped operating. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think that's how it worked. So it's, uh, <laughs> it is nice that that's not something we have to worry about anymore, as technology has come so far. We don't have cartridges with watch batteries in them anymore. <laughs> okay, let's take a look around the mine. I think there are a couple items around here that we can pick up. We may need to use the dousing machine later on. Now, one little piece of... Does this guy give us a TM? I knew he gave us something. Now, one little really, really cool piece of world building in this game is these vents. So, as you can see, it exchanges oxygen air to the uh, Grand Underground. So, people working in the mines or exploring the Grand Underground don't have to breathe in toxic fumes. They can breathe in fresh air from, you know, the surface of the world instead of having to breathe whatever sort of nastiness is down under there. Down under. I'm sorry, that was, that was stupid. I won't do that again. <laughs> X defense, we will sell you immediately. Do you have any trainer battles? Yep, yeah, so uh, we may be challenged to some battles down here. Come on, Zubat. Geodude. Not feeling the Geodude line. I know we've got a uh, copy of Shining Pearl coming in, but all those extra trade revolutions, oh, it's so much work, so tedious. Does my attack go up? Yeah. So I would, uh, I would skip this battle, but at this point I just think what are we cutting out, like, five seconds of time? Depending on how long these sandstorm animations take. Sandstorm animations, sorry. Okay, let's hurry this up. Yeah, 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 get out of here. Okay, thank goodness, moving on. Kong is level 13. Just making his way up. That progression ladder in preparation for the gym. I'm sure you can guess what type the gym is <laughs> from the scenery. Oh my goodness. Okay, we'll skip this. I'll see you in just a second. I totally forgot. I promised I wouldn't say the see you in just a second thing. So if we get a battle, I'll just let it happen. Just let it happen. Wow, what a seamless transition. I bet nobody even noticed because I wasn't shoving it down your throat. 
Oh dear. <laughs> Ignore what I just said. We'll be right back. Zubat. Oh, Zubat. Seamless transition. End of seamless transition. <laughs> I'll bet you nobody even caught that. Pokemon pun not intended. Okay, we'll... Oh, there's a ledge that way. We can't even go up that way. Alright, we'll talk to... Oh boy, I don't remember his name. Is it Brawly or something? <laughs> He's gonna use that Rock Smash move we got earlier. Demonstrate how they can be used in the field. Just, just because. I mean, he could have started off by telling us his name, but that's fine. Oh, he didn't even tell us his name. Nice to meet you. Watch me explode this. Okay, bye. <laughs> Onyx, eh? Hmm. You know, I think you can find a Steelix a little bit later on in the game without having to do all the trade evolutions. And if I did want one on my team, which I don't think I do, I would probably just go and catch a Steelix there later on. To save me the trouble of trying to find a metal coat and do all the trading and that baloney. So, uh... Seamless transition. <laughs> okay, we're back. Let's see how much experience points we get, or how many experience points we get from that. Not a lot. Okay, I thought maybe we get a level up. Okay, let's continue exploring in here, even though there's nothing left to see. All right, off we go to the gym. Are these just flat images of rocks, these little ones here, or are they actually 3D models? They almost look like just flat 2D images. I still do love the art style of this game, though, and I didn't think I would like it, but it's uh, it's growing on me quite a bit. <laughs> the other thing that's growing on me is my need for coffee. <laughs> All right, so we, I don't know if rescued is the right word. We got the gym leader for the Orberg City Gym out of the mines and back into the gym. It's literally his job to be in the gym, so I don't know why he was anywhere else. But now we can battle him. And before we do that, we are going to make a quick save. Okay. To the gym we go. Ooh, fancy. Okay. Now I know what you're thinking. Please, God, skip the trainers. I'm not going to, but you'll never know. <laughs> Rourke, that's his name. Where did I get Brawly? Must be another Pokemon character. I don't... I can't keep track of all their names. I'm just going to bring us back for a second just to point out that I love the backgrounds in these battle scenes. Like, look at the lights in the gyms, if the game would be kind enough to show them. Yeah, isn't that nice? I think in Pokemon Sword or Shield, the interior background was just a kind of gray walls and a gray floor, but I think it's really nice to see that they've gone above and beyond here and uh, done some lighting, some nice reflections on the ground. Really looks like the interior of a gym. All right, <laughs> I'll leave you alone again. Okay, probably didn't need to make that cut, but Kong leveled up to level 14. That attack stat is getting mighty high. Lux is very close to level 13, but he's not going to be much use to us in a uh, in a rock type gym. Oh yeah, the type for the gym is rock. In case you hadn't figured that out at this point. Oh, looks like Kong is evolving into something. Why am I acting like it's going to be a spoiler? He's evolving into a Monferno. <laughs> okay, now uh, we should have a pretty easy time with this gym. I hope I don't come to regret those words, but... Uh, having a second stage Pokemon in the first gym is always super duper handy. Monferno's data will be added to the Pokedex. Whoa, he's not even three feet tall? Wow. He just seemed like he'd be taller. He looks like he'd be like... Four and a half foot adolescent teen or something. Okay. Mock punch. Yes, sir. I like power up punch because it raises our attack stat. Mock punch is 
pretty much the same thing, but it's guaranteed to go first. And I know we were having some trouble with speed earlier on. And Taunt is just such a niche move. I just can't see us using it. And Scratch is my backup in case we're up against something that uh, Fighting or Fire type doesn't work for. So I think I'm going to get rid of Taunt. I just can't see us using it that much. It's funny, um, fighting's usually super effective on, you know, types that would generally be slower, like a rock-type Pokemon or an ice-type Pokemon, so it's interesting that they made a fighting-type move that always goes first, even though you're generally not up against anything that would be faster than you. I guess maybe dark-type Pokemon, but whatever. All right, <laughs> let's cut. I just realized that this is Monferno's first, uh, battle as... Well, a Monferno, so... Or Kong's first battle as a Monferno, rather, I should say. So, instead of skipping, how about we all watch his debut battle, shall we? Now, if you're noticing some stuttering in the background, that is because I am currently exporting Episode 3 while I am trying to capture Episode 4 from my Switch capture card. So, if there is stuttering, it's, it's not the game. I think the game's fairly well optimized, so it's not the game dropping frames on the Switch. It's actually my... Computer having trouble processing everything all at the same time. So if you're watching it and, you know, thinking about buying Pokemon Brilliant Diamond or Shining Pearl and you're thinking, ooh, those frame drops, uh, yeah, it's not it's not the Switch itself. It's running pretty well on the Switch. It's the computer. So don't let that uh, sway your opinion of the performance of the game. I've, uh, I haven't had any problems yet and we haven't had any freezes or any crashes or anything like that. Well, I hope you enjoyed Monferno's first, is it Soiree or Foiree? His first outing as a Monferno, he did pretty well. He pretty much swept that team, so that is good to see. I'm thinking after this gym, we're going to have to get Lux back in the leading spot of the party because he's going to be falling behind in levels quite a bit. So we've made it to our first gym leader. We are going to save before we give it our first attempt. Hopefully things go well, let's give it a try. Welcome, this is the Orberg Pokemon Gym. It's now dawned on me that this is the first time I've ever really read out the lines. You know what, it'd be odd if I started now, so I'm just going to keep paraphrasing like I have been. Rourke is the gym leader and he uses primarily rock type Pokemon, so we are going to punch them. <laughs> and we won't be skipping this battle because it is a milestone battle against a gym leader. And you gotta love that sweet, sweet music. So let's just take some time to appreciate the music, shall we? I love the gym leader battle music. Hopefully they'll take a, um, a page out of Gen 5's book and maybe when he, his ace Pokemon comes out, we'll get a change up in the music. Dynamic music is always really cool in games. One thing I love about Mach Punch is every time it hits, you get an attack boost. So just like Abro was setting up with his special attack in Episode 2, Kong is setting up with his physical attack in this episode. If you hear a lot of buzzing in the background, it's just um, assignment notifications. I'm currently doing my master's in epidemiology. And every time I turn around, they're like this rock being thrown at Kong. They are throwing another assignment at me that I will leave until the last minute. <laughs> Probably not a good attitude to have in a master's program, but uh, what are you going to do? <laughs> Holy cow, we might have a maxed out attack now. I think his ace Pokemon, which is Craniados, has a, like Abra, a notoriously low physical defense stat. So I wouldn't be surprised if we took this thing out in one hit. Dynamic music? Please? Mm, no, it doesn't look like it. Now, if you have a keen eye, Pokemon pun not intended, 
Um, you may have noticed that the spawn animation out of the Pokeball for his Craniados was a little bit different. At least I think it was, and I think that might be a feature that we will be looking at later on in the game. We did one-hit him. Or Oko him, <laughs> as it's known. Um, where you can put stickers on your Pokeball and decorate it, so different animations play when your Pokemon exit the ball. Hey, we won! We officially got our first gem in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. Your buffed up Pokemon. Embarrassing. Ouch, that's not very nice. Maybe I'm just good at battling. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> I went and lost to a trainer who didn't have a single... Isn't that your whole job? You're the first gym leader. I... Alright. <laughs> Moving on. But that's the story. You were strong and I was weak. Yeah, you're right. That's all there is to it. Give me my badge, Mr. Guy. Look at that. Glorious. And there's your thumbnail. <laughs> we received the coal badge. Fantastic. And... Oh, TM76. Let's see what we got. Stealth Rock. I always thought it was Rock Tomb, but I guess that is... Uh, Gen 3. Yeah, so we got the stickers for our Pokeball. Cool. And we unlocked Rock Smash for our Poketch. R1. Or R1, I'm thinking PlayStation controls. R. And now we can use Rock Smash. I think we just click. Can't use that here yet. We'll use it later. So, in the next episode, we will do some backtracking and go back to the Orbird Gate and the top of Route 103, I believe. And we will smash through some rocks and, uh, Go back and see what we missed, and maybe we'll find that Zubat. If not, well, no Zubat for the team. But thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.